In this video, we're going to learn about lift charts, a useful tool for evaluating classification models. So a lift chart is based on sorting classification results by the probability of a target class. So if you have some data, um, that might look something like this here. So you have predictions of here, subscribe, yes or no, and the confidence of yes or one or so on, sorted top to the bottom, and here's the result. To create a lift chart, the algorithm first does this sort and arranges from top to bottom. And then it creates a bar chart, which groups the results, usually in 10 deciles, it could be a different number of groups, uh, based on the proportion of those that had true positives. So in this result, it, um, in this example here, it looks at uh, the first 10% of data, 99% of them were true positives. And that covered 28% of all the uh, true positives in the entire data set. Then the next 20%, the, the next 20% of the data, it had here something like uh, eight, almost 90% of true positives. And that covered 54% of all the true positives in the data set. And then here, the next 30% was only at around 58% of true positives, and that covers 71% of the data set. So the advantage of sorting things um, in this way is that managers will usually prioritize the top deciles for action. So if, for instance, this uh, is sorting uh, customers on their, according to their likelihood of saying yes to a marketing offer, then um, instead of having a data set which is just randomly, uh, so here in this data set, 9% said yes, and really the manager doesn't know who are those 9% that said yes. Let's start with the original data sets. Uh, it doesn't know who are the 9% who already originally said yes, but with a predictive model, once it is sorted by confidence, then it knows the ones that are most confident, where the confidence is highest, are those that are most likely to say yes. And then the manager can then start uh, approaching people based on their ranking with a uh, confidence that those with a higher confidence scores are more likely to say yes than those all the way at the bottom with the low confidence scores that are more likely to say no. So that's the general idea of what a lift chart tries to give. So in this, in this particular data set, the lift chart we have was not as optimistic as the one I showed. Uh, with this actual data uh, that we saw, the top 10% of customers, and that means uh, here there are 3,969 examples, nearly 4,000 rows. So take the first 400 rows. So that's the top 10%. Well, 36% of those said yes. Okay. And that covers 40% of all those who eventually said yes. But if you go to the next 20%, so that is here approximately rows 400 to 800. Well, in that group, sorry, only 8% said yes. And each 10%, you have 5%, 7%, or so on. And when you consider that in the original data set, there's a total of 9% who said yes. Well, then you're looking at if you target the top 10%, you're getting a really uh, big bang for your buck. Uh, instead of the random 9%, you're getting 36% who said yes. But after that, the remaining 90% 90, 90, uh, 90 of uh, customers well, uh, you're getting very low percentages where you're going to say yes. 
So a manager might look at this and say, you know what, I'm going to just target the top 10%. I expect more than a third of them to say yes. And the others, well, maybe I'll just send them email and then hope uh, for the best. It's not worth the investment uh, on those that I expect to have such a low response. So that's the kind of decision that uh, lift charts can help with. Um, however, it's not only for commercial or marketing purposes. I'd like to show you here an academic article that uses lift charts uh, from Rapid Miner with uh, medical uh, purposes. So i pull this up. So this is by Gulardi uh, et al, um, 2019, computer-aided decision-making for predicting liver disease using PSO-based optimized SVM with feature selection. So they are uh, looking at uh, data sets that have information uh, about customers, uh, I'm sorry, about the patients. And so they are trying to estimate which patients are more likely to have liver disease, which is information in the data set. And so they analyze many different uh, models, uh, random forest, neural networks, um, um, and uh, support vector machines and uh, other variations of support vector machines in addition to others. So here's uh, a decision tree from random forest, here's a neural network, and so on. But among uh, the tools they use to assess the value of their model, here they have the ROC curves of each of the five models that they tested. And you can see that the yellow one is at a curve that is closer to the top left and significantly more than almost all the other models, except a small overlap there. And that is a PSO SVM. So it's a variation, the particle swarm optimization variation of support vector machines. So that definitely performed way better than all the others. You can see just by its curvature being closer to the top left, um, the AUC. And here is its lift chart. So when they sorted uh, by the confidence of the model. Uh, here they group not by uh, tens, but they grouped into nine groups uh, here. And so the top third, so in the first uh, third, uh, they had, um, a, a, okay, so percentage. So here they had a little more than 20% in the first third, uh, first ninth that said yes. And then in the next, uh, in the second ninth, they had close to 60% uh, that it predictably, correctly predicted uh, liver disease. And in the third uh, group, even more, almost uh, 100% in there. And so in the first three groups, they had a huge uh, amount of uh, predictability uh, based on the confidence. So these are other ways of uh, modeling lift charts. Uh, but the point is that w when uh, the analysis can sort the predictions based on confidence, then uh, doctors can target these top third or so patients for maybe more expensive uh, treat, uh, investigation uh, to verify if they have liver disease, whereas the others, it's not just so random, but the others can be more safely ignored that it's much less likely that they would have a, a liver disease. So this is the kind of uh, decision that can be made from uh, these results.